Moving on now to our top domestic story this hour, though keeping with Saudi Arabia, we are following news out of the House of Representatives where a legislative trick recently allowed Republicans to defeat a measure which would end U.S. support for the Saudi-led war on Yemen. This week, the House approved language which stripped war powers privilege from a measure introduced by Democratic Representative Ro Khanna, designed to, quote, remove United States armed forces from hostility in the Republic of Yemen that have not been authorized by Congress. In order to kill the initiative, Republicans added a last-minute line to a procedural resolu resolution concerning the Manage Our Wolves Act, which deals with the country's wolf population. The final clause in the resolution, quote, provides the provisions of Section 7 of the War Powers Resolution shall not apply to House Concurrent Resolution 138, Resolution 138 being Representative Khanna's Yemen measure. Section 4 of the War Powers Resolution would have granted privilege to Khanna's measure, guaranteeing it would be considered on the House floor if not passed by committee within 15 days. In other words, this maneuver ensures the House will not have to consider a vote on the Yemen war until January, when Democrats take control of the House. I rise in strong opposition to this rule that will deny members of Congress an up or down vote about whether the United States should be complicit in the war in Yemen. Let's be very clear. This is unprecedented. In American history, never, never has the Speaker of the House and the majority denied a member of Congress a vote on matters of war and peace. Meanwhile, in Yemen on Thursday, the Saudi-led U.S.-supported coalition announced it has stopped a military offensive to capture the western city of Hodeidah from Houthi rebels. For two weeks, Houthis endured a vicious ground and air assault, managing to hold the strategic port city, where much-needed goods and critical medical and food enter the country. The United Nations recently updated journalists on relief efforts near the port. Since the 1st of June, more than 570,000 people have been displaced by conflict across Hodeidah Governorate. The UN and its humanitarian partners have reached nearly all of these people with emergency relief packages. Hodeidah's ports remain operational, and Yemen depends, as you know, on imports for 90 percent of its staple food and nearly all food and fuel. Most imports enter through Hodeidah or Salif ports. With the war on Yemen in question, we're joined now by Nicholas Davies. He's the author of Blood on Our Hands, The American Invasion and Destruction of Iraq. Welcome to In Question, Mr. Davies. Why do you believe Republicans opposed a vote on U.S. support for the war on Yemen? Well, because it's obviously a vote that they believe they would lose. Um, Ro Khanna's resolution has bipartisan support. There are four uh, Republicans who are signed on as co-sponsors, along with uh, 73 Democrats. And why is it, though, that Republicans are not in favor of ending U.S. support for the war? Well, I believe that the Republicans and the Trump administration are trying to um, yeah, essentially to, to fudge some kind of deal and with the illusion that they are working to bring an end to the war, um, you know, as, as opposed to the War Powers Resolution, which would completely end the U.S. role in it. What the Trump administration has announced recently is that Saudi Arabia will be taking over its own in-air refueling of its planes on the way to bomb uh, a, a lot of military and civilian targets in Yemen. But this, this was on the cards all along in the $110 billion arms package announced by Trump in May 2017. That included three brand new Lockheed Martin KC-130J in air refueling planes. So that, that was a year and a half ago. So presumably during this time, those planes have been uh, manufactured and shipped to Saudi Arabia. And Saudi Arabia is now ready to start using them. So this is not really a concession. This is not a step towards ending the war at all. Uh, That's a very interesting point I haven't heard raised at all in, in 
speaking about this decision by the Trump administration, you recently published an article documenting how experts now believe the total war deaths in Yemen have been underestimated by five to one. Explain how this conclusion was reached. Yes, well, this is there's a group called ACLED, um, based in the UK, uh, was originally formed at the University of Sussex, and they track uh, wars around the world and publish figures on how many people have been killed in Libya, in Somalia, and in Yemen, and, and other, other conflict zones. And until recently, the figures ACLED was publishing were more or less tracking with the WHO's figures, which are based on surveys of hospitals in Yemen. Of course, about half the hospitals in Yemen are destroyed or damaged and barely able to treat their patients, let alone compile, uh, you know, complete casualty figures for the war. So, so that was bound to be a, a huge underestimate. And ACLED has now been going through all its sources for reports of war deaths in Yemen. And um, Andrea Carboni at ACLED spoke to Patrick Coburn of the independent newspaper in the UK, and he said that they, they haven't completed their review, but he believes that when it is complete, they will be publishing a figure of between 70 and 80,000 people killed in Yemen. Now, this does not count people dying of starvation and preventable diseases. Save the Children reported at the end of 2017 that 50,000 children had starved to death in Yemen in 2017 alone. So the, the, the true number of total people killed by the war and by the results of the war, this humanitarian crisis, are now absolutely surely in the hundreds of thousands. Well, very briefly, Mr. Davies, I'm wondering, what do you believe is the best option for ending the war? Well, I believe I, I support um, the war powers resolutions in the Senate and the House because, I, I, frankly, I think, you know, while the U.S. reporting and Western reporting has minimized the U.S. role, the U.S. is playing a critical role in this war, and not least in supplying the lion's share of the weapons that Saudi Arabia is using. So in addition to um, passing the War Powers Act and ending uh, the direct U.S. role mm. in the war, the U.S. should also impose a moratorium on selling weapons to Saudi Arabia. And that really would, would mm. force the Saudis and the other members of the coalition to, um, to end this war. We're going to have to leave it there for now. Journalist Nicholas Davies, thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.